It's Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz in the Inland Empire today. It is my honor to introduce you to Assemblyman Jay Obernolte's Woman of the Year. Mr. Obernolte represents significant portions of the Inland Empire, and he honored this year Dolores Williams as his Woman of the Year. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. How did that happen? <laughs> what did happen? Talk to us about it. First of all, thank you of for course, having me. Of course, of course. I believe the way the nomination <laughs> took place, <laughs> it was a little bit of a secret to me, right. but several community leaders and members nominated me, and based on my bio and the contributions to the community, I was selected. And let's talk about that, because there is no doubt that you have contributed mightily to your community. You are based in the Victor Valley area, yes. in the high desert and you founded an organization called Millionaire Mind Kids. Yes. Uh, before you tell us specifically about the organization's work, what caused you? You have a nice life in the Victor Valley. <laughs> Why did you decide to you know, launch this uh, remarkable organization? Well, actually my life was really nice okay. because I was uh, in the career okay. of my dreams. Uh, my background is aerospace and oh. information technology. Were you working at the logistics airport out there? No, actually uh. I worked in the Los Angeles area. Oh, but you were commuting in? And I was commuting. Got and it. I moved to the Victor Valley area um, as a retirement. Oh. And so I only lived there over the weekend. Oh, I see, I see, I see. But all of a sudden I had a life-changing event. Yeah. And I had the opportunity to raise my two lovely grandchildren who were at the time two and four years old. And one of them is here today. And, one and is she here is today. lovely if I may say. Nigel Williams. Exactly. Yes. And I can imagine that was life changing. For that you. was a life changing event. And, and a blessing and a gift in the end for sure. Very rewarding right. at this time. Mm -hmm. Challenging right. at some times but right. extremely re rewarding right now. And as I understand it what you learned and what you determined is that and I, I know this to be true our children are not taught financial literacy. We teach them to read, we teach them to add, we teach them to subtract, but they don't know about credit, they don't know about debit. The schools don't offer that as much as they should. That's correct. Now originally the financial literacy program, it started off as a behavior modification program. Mm. Um, so I found a fun way to teach financial literacy through behavior modification. Mm -hmm. Because as we know, our behavior contributes to how we manage our money. And so one of the things that we looked at doing was building a strong self-empowerment infrastructure, teaching money management, credit responsibility, where in our programs, all of our kids get assigned a FICO score and they take advantage of the low and low, medium, and high privileges can that I, are associated. I, I gotta talk about credit responsibility. <laughs> when I walk on college campuses and I see those credit card companies giving out t-shirts if you sign up for a credit card, I mean, look, I know they're a business, but ugh, how many kids do you know by the age of 20 their FICA score is in the mm, dumps because they don't know how to manage credit? Absolutely. You know, most students who graduate from college have about forty thousand dollars worth of debt. Uh, and it's not student debt, in, it's credit card debt. In credit card debt, uh, many of them. It's devastating. So one of the things we teach them, uh, the power of credit right. and how to use credit responsibly. So critical. But the organization expanded and you move beyond financial literacy and you also are focused on STEM, for example. I want to start with one of kind of the subsets of the STEM education that you offer, the robotics program. Tell us about the robotics program that you've been championing. Well, we did evolve into STEAM, mm. STEM, oh, STEM, 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 right, STEM, science, yeah. technology, engineering, mm. and math, and science, technology, engineering, and the arts and math. Right. And we focus on robotics mm -hmm. for a few reasons. One, because it's the evolving technology right. that our future is moving into. Um, there's a huge void uh, currently in the technology industry. The United right. States is graduating 15% 
of college graduates from STEM as opposed right. to China, 45%. Right. So we wanted to focus a little bit on robotics. And what I see is that you mentored students that ultimately won the Robotics League Championship. Not bad. We did. We've won many, many competitions mm -hmm. and a championship. And one of the, the reasons we really um, focus on that because robotics was a, is an intellectual sport. Mm, truly. And uh, I serve an underserved population. And that means some of the students I get are academically lower performance mm -hmm. based on how they're graded at school. Uh, by the way, I don't think any students are academically uh, lower performers. I, I think yeah. students have different modalities. Sure. And hands-on kinds of projects are the kinds of projects that they learn more mm -hmm. effectively from. Mm -hmm. The students that I have in my robotics, or that I started with in my robotics uh, programs, those were students who were not allowed to participate in some of their school robotics for many reasons. There were some exclusionary uh, mm. policies. Some of the programs were for gate students and high performance right. students, and some of them were rewarded kinds of activities mm. for the high performing students. So when some of those students uh, became rejected, right. we started our own robotics Good for team. you. I'm not surprised, given your professional background, that you also focused on aviation. And that makes a lot of sense in the Victor Valley because the logistics airport that you would focus on aviation. So, and then not far is Ontario Airport, which is return to Absolutely. local control and LAX. Also not Absolutely. too, too far. I mean, lots of aviation in our area. So tell us about your focus on aviation through your program, Millionaire Mind Kids. Well, our program continues to expand based mm -hmm. on the business needs and the community right. needs. Um, and, and the academic needs right, in sure. our community. And so one of the things, I have strong aviation background as well as strong right. engineering and robotics background coming from the Hughes Aircraft Company, oh, yes. aerospace oh, industry, yes. uh, artificial intelligence, a little bit of artificial intelligence. And so I just packaged it in a way that I could introduce students to the evolving technology. So one of the things during my due diligence process, I found out uh, working or doing the sneaker work right. out at the Southern California Logistics or Airport. Sure. Sorry about that. No, no. Um, that there was a huge need for aviation right. students to be exposed to aviation. There was going to be a wealth of jobs over right. the next five to six years. I think it was estimated and projected about 3,000 jobs was coming right to our backyard in the high desert. So I wanted to be a part of growing homegrown talent. So I listened carefully to what the business mm -hmm. owners out there needed. And one of the things they say was, you know, we bring a lot of students in to our aviation school of technology, they get their certifications and then they go off. Mm. So we wanted to target local students who had an interest in um, staying in the community. Mm -hmm. And that's why we opened the aviation program. And clearly it's been successful. It's extremely successful. And I have to think, like you said, the Southern California Logistic Airport is incredibly appreciative of what you're doing because those jobs are not going away. They may increase. And with Ontario Airport returning to local control, there presumably will be more jobs. What a tremendous gift it must have been for you Absolutely. to receive notice that you had been selected by Assemblyman Jay Obernolte as his Woman of the Year for 2017. He represents significant portions of the Inland Empire, Big Bear as well. And I'm just so proud of you and so glad to have thank met you. you. Thank you so much I for joining us. I am absolutely honored and her, thank you for having of me. Of course. Her name is Dolores Williams. She is that Woman of the Year. She runs an organization called Millionaire Minds, Mind Kids in the yes. Victor Valley area. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We thank you so much much for joining us from the Inland Empire on Local Edition.